What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Take His Whistle podcast. Today, we've got another college football episode for you guys, and it's going to be fun. Uh, stay tuned. Fire to the end zone. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Oh my God, what's going on everybody welcome back to another episode of the because whistle podcast i'm one of your hosts josh and i'm here as always with my good friend and co-host parker what is up back with another one so today we are back uh, uh as we said um except we're back with our normal schedule uh on our Thursday college football episode. So <clears throat> today we've got a little recap, catching up some catch. We got some catching up to do for some uh the past two weeks we missed, I guess, at this point. And then uh we we've got some week predictions. So hopefully you guys are ex- as excited as we are. I know me and Parker are excited. And uh, let's go ahead and hop into it, Parker. What would you like to start with today? First thing I do want to uh, bring up is the, um, I'm sure everybody saw it, the unfortunate passing of uh, Bobby Knight, the Indiana basketball coach, or most uh, most known for his Indiana uh, coaching years. Uh, he did pass away, and uh, I do want to send my condolences out to any of his family and everything like that. He was just a great coach, Hall of Fame coach, gave us some great moments, uh, funny moments as well. So that is uh, first first thing I did want to just talk about is just paying my respects to him. Um, but I guess we can start with week eight, which we briefly, we talked about uh, what was going to come that week. Uh, we ended up not really discussing it because we missed, or we, we didn't discuss the results because we missed last week, but uh, just kind of a quick recap over some big things that happened. Um the first thing, as I'm kind of looking through here, I guess we can start out with the dominating performance from Michigan. Um, and I, we know that Michigan State is not that good. Um, they're only 2-5 and five on the year. But I really did not expect it to be a 49 to nothing blowout. Um, did you see anything from that game that could have stood, that kind of stood out to you um, that you'd like to talk about? Uh, I mean, I saw a whole a lot of sign stealing, I can tell you that. I uh, saw a lot of cheating and ruining of the integrity of this great game that we watched today, Parker. Agreed. And uh, honestly, it's unacceptable. Agreed. Um, no, but in all seriousness, I didn't even watch that game. Uh, to be honest, I, I've at least me personally, I don't know how other people feel, but like after all this like scandal went down, and it just keeps it keeps getting worse and worse day by day. And honestly, I have lost so much interest in Michigan football after hearing all those. Honestly, I don't even know if they're rumors at this point. I'm pretty sure it's just proven they just cheated their asses off for multiple years. So I, I really I, I really can't even say I, I'm entertained by that team anymore. Granted, you know, gr- there's still great players on that team, still very talented players on that team, very young, talented players. Um, and obviously Jim Harbaugh is still a great coach, but I just I can't bring myself to really support or watch a team that I know is just kind of w- willingly cheating every week. So it you know that's my opinion on it. I'm sure it's it differs for other people, but I just I've found myself not being interested in them uh, for the past couple weeks now. Right, and what what is so unfortunate about the entire situation is more than likely, if there is a punishment that is going to be dropped down on Michigan, we're probably not going to see it until the off season, and then we're going to have to they're going to have to face those consequences either next year or the year after that. So Michigan, who's uh, has some great talent and they have a good team, they have a, a tough schedule coming up. If they somehow win out and they make the playoffs they they have a really solid chance of um winning the entire playoffs so you're like they're, and they're what ha- and and what happens in that situation if they make it to the national championship and they win 
do they just get it revoked immediately after winning it? Do they keep it? Because everyone's gonna know it's not real national championship. Right, everyone's gonna ev- everyone's gonna know they got there from a fraud. So and like that's, that's the unfortunate part. That's like I'm like because if if you know like there's so much uh, now. Obviously, I'm not the NCAA. I don't know anybody in the in the NCAA committee. Um, but you know, like they're cheating, and maybe this Michigan State game they did not cheat, or maybe the 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 for the rest of the season they don't cheat. But you know, there is games that resulted in them cheating, and you just give them a slap on the wrist right now. But the big consequence isn't going to come until the end of the season, the off season, and now it's like, what in like what what's the point in trying you know like you lose like imagine if the the championship game ends up being michigan and georgia and for whatever reason michigan just beats the brakes off of georgia and it was just a straight talent differential differential i mean nobody it doesn't matter how well michigan plays it's always gonna be the storyline of oh was michigan cheating that game when maybe they really didn't they got caught already so maybe they're trying to clean up their act before it gets too bad and now it's like regardless of what michigan does for the rest of the season and it's so unfortunate that it's not just like the law isn't brought down on them right now that they can't make the playoffs they can't make a bowl game none of these wins count blah blah blah, or even just get the season suspended because of this whole scandal going on yeah it's a tricky one for sure i uh i don't really know what punishment they'll get if a punishment at all comes upon them Mm -hmm. um it's just tricky uh it's really hard to tell um because you know i've seen the death penalty get thrown around a lot but that's not gonna happen i mean that there's they're not gonna get the death penalty there's no shot no um not not a powerhouse like michigan yeah no i i think if anything and also you know i'm pretty sure he was already going to leave to the league after this year anyways but i mean if jim harbaugh I had a reason to leave to go to the league. I mean, now he definitely does. So not only would not only would they, or let me learn English real quick in my head for a second. Not okay. only will they potentially get punished pretty heavily or what heavily, but they're also probably going to lose their coach to the league. So I mean, th- even if they don't get punished heavily, they're still going to get unintentionally punished strictly off of Jim Harbaugh leaving. Um, I'm sure there's going to be great coaching hot, uh, hires this off season, but I mean, l- losing a coach like Jim Harbaugh is still hard for any program. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that that's a, I mean, I've granted this whole cheating scan scandal, so that could change, but minus this whole, uh, the, 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 minus the season alone. Uh, Harbaugh is a first ballot hall of famer, and that is not something that you can just replace overnight yeah no not at all um <clears throat> but i guess moving on from them um they haven't really been relevant at all this year but i just kind of find it funny maybe not funny because you know they were just in the national championship last year but i think it kind of adds to maybe the fact that last year was kind of just one big fraud run but TCU lost to Kansas State forty-one to three. Um, that is embarrassing. That is very embarrassing for a team that just made the national championship last year. Granted, they got the shit beat out of them last year in the national championship, but they still made the natty, and now they're losing forty-one to three. So, I think I that. I don't want to call it a, a – that last year was a fraud run. I think it's – they were a good team. Obviously, they were not on the same level as uh, Georgia, clearly. But I, I'd say they were a good team. They just lost so many people, whether it was them going to going professional or just straight up graduating or transferring yeah. out with all the NIL deals now. Well, I, I, l- let, me, l- let, me rephrase, let me rephrase what I said. I don't think their run was fraud, but they also didn't compare to – any of the teams that were in the playoffs. I think Michigan probably should have beaten them. I don't really know what happened to Michigan that day, but obviously TCU found a way to win. But regardless, I still don't think TCU was as good as those three other teams in the playoffs. And I 
personally don't think they were better than Alabama either last year. I think Alabama should have been in there instead of TCU, personally. Um, but I think TCU still should have been ranked top, like, seven, and they still should have made a really good bowl game. I just, as far as the playoffs go, that is what I'm referring to as far as fraud goes. I just right. don't think they should have made the playoffs. A couple years ago, I don't know if you remember, and I, I can't, re- I cannot remember what team it was, um, but they like they went like two or three straight years without never losing a game, and towards like the third or second season that they were undefeated, everybody was like saying like this team needs to be into the playoffs. Do you do you know who I'm talking about? Do you remember this? Uh, was it a few years ago or was it like years ago? It was like a few when years we were, ago. when we were kids, type of shit. No, yeah, it it was it was recent. It it was fairly recent. I got I could probably Google it and find because it. I well I'm just I'm wondering because I know Boise State used to be a powerhouse as far I don't as like think it was being like undefeated the, a lot and then getting no credit as far as like you know bowl games go and stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't think that they were undefeated. I'm 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 actually I'm googling. Or I think are you talking are, 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 you, are you talking about Cincinnati? What did Cincinnati go undefeated and then they didn't make the playoffs? Did, but did they go undefeated multiple years? No, they they did make the playoffs. They just got destroyed first round. I'm googling, so I'm sorry for this. Um Because I mean, I remember it vividly. Um that I honestly can't remember any playoffs in the past recent years that's been anything other than Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State. Ah, ah, I hear this. Here it is. It's, it, it was it was US. It was UF or UCF um, a couple years ago. Oh, two thousand. You mean? Oh, they yeah. made the play. They made the playoffs in two thousand eighteen. No, no. So 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 basically, what happened is they went undefeated for like two straight years. They did not lose a game. And it was pretty convincingly how good they were beating teams. Towards the the second year of them not making the playoffs, uh, people were starting to get upset. They're like, we have done everything that you have asked us to, and we're still not making the playoffs. And I, the reason I bring this whole thing up is because I compare this to TCU. They let TCU get in. They let TCU play with the big boys, and they got their, the brakes beat off of them. The same reason why UCF did not make the playoffs this year is because, yeah, they went undefeated, but they played a bunch of small Division One schools. And, yeah, they're still Division One, but whenever you compare teams like TCU last year or UCF from 2018, and you compare them to the Georgias and the Alabamas, the Florida States, the Clemsons, the, the Michigans, they don't stand a chance. And so TCU making the playoffs last year was, I feel like, almost a... a a way for the NCAA to be like, here, this is what you want. You want TCU to get in this playoffs. Watch what happens to them. And they got absolutely demolished. Yeah. And now go, they're bounced back here to prove that, no, we are actually here to stay. You you, you gave us a taste of the playoffs. We're going to want to get back there. Then they lose 41-3 to to Kansas State is just um, the topping on all of it. This is the reason why some of these undefeated schools, these lower-tier schools, they don't have a chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, which which really sucks, by the way, because it's like it, it it creates such a bias when it comes to the like if you are one of those four or five teams that is in the top echelon of teams every year, and I'm sure you know the teams I'm already referring to. But in the past few years, we got right. Michigan, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, Clemson. If you're one of those teams. You receive, which, by the way, Clemson, you can almost drop them out of that echelon as of right, right that, now. That was only like a but, three, three yeah. year <laughs> But nonetheless, still, the bias you get come playoff time, come ranking time, is just absurd. Like, I, I just, I, I can't, like, wrap my head around how bias it is when it comes to that type of the 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 rankings and everything like that because you know personally I would love to see teams like UCF Cincinnati TCU th- those underdog teams I would love to see them make the playoffs more often just to shake it up a little bit you know what I mean which is why I'm so excited for the 12 team playoff next year because any given Saturday anything can happen and 
you know, we haven't seen it too much this year as far as those top four teams go, but I mean, literally anything can happen. I mean, in, in 12, a 12 team playoff, by the way, just seems fun. It just sounds, it just sounds fun. It's like what they, they should have it, always it, done it, they should have always done it. I agree, but it also it extends the season. You know, like we get more college football, and who doesn't mm-hmm. want that? But and then at the same time, to kind of play devil's advocate, when you add a twelve team um, playoff, is the same thing going to happen, but on a bigger scale? So, like, obviously, your top twelve teams make the playoffs. Let's just say, for the the sake of the 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 argument, let's say TCU was a good team they were ranked ninth right let's just say they're ranked ninth that that puts them in a the top 12 spot so they should make the playoffs but you get a team like alabama who's sitting they have two losses three losses they're sitting at like 17 right they're not in that top 12 is that bias gonna play a factor again and say tcu does not make the playoffs at all right and alabama does even though tcu had the better season and um, Alabama, if it was fourteen fourteen playoffs, they would they would never they wouldn't even sniff it. But just because they are Alabama, is it still going to knock out some of these smaller schools? Whenever you're talking twelve team brackets, because at the end of the day, the NCAA all they all they are looking at is views and money. They just want as much as much money as they can get, and how right. that is possible is by making the best matchups possible. Right. And so these smaller schools, even with the twelve team bracket. That's why that is why March Madness and the way March Madness is set up, it 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 is far and away the one of the most, if not the most, I don't know for a fact, but money making um sporting events out there because these smaller schools are guaranteed a, a ticket to the big dance. If you win your conference, you are guaranteed to have a chance to win for a national title. Uh and I don't think that is something that college football is able to do. Just because obviously you can't make a sixty-four team bracket because that would literally take three hundred and sixty-five days all all year long to do. Uh, right. But it's just kind of you know like it's just something to think about. Like I mean, there no matter how big or small the 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 NCAA p- football playoff bracket's going to be, there's always going to be teams that are unfortunately deserving or not not going to be able to make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the if you look at the rankings this year too, though, like <clears throat> you got teams like and now, granted, they're nowhere close to the number twelve or to the top twelve rankings, but like teams like Tulane, James Madison, Air Force, like obviously, I agree with you. I don't think they'd ever get enough votes to to make that twelve team playoff, but. It's more so of just like a hypothetical, like imaginary vision type of thing. Because wouldn't it be so fucking entertaining to see Air Force in the playoffs running a run option offense on everybody and seeing if it works? Like yeah. that would be so fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it also comes with strength, uh, strength of schedule too. Like the it, it the it's these teams, these smaller teams are handicapped, so they don't really have they don't really have much of a chance to make that 12 team playoff because they're not in a good enough conference and people don't care about their conferences so they can be ranked top 25 but people won't care so that that's why that's why so many people are kind of in a fuss about James Madison not being bowl eligible this year because it's their first year in uh FBS so it's because James Madison is playing very good they are playing very good this year for their first year of FBS ball division one ball. They're playing very good and they're, then they can't even make a bowl game in the rank 23rd. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like the, the conferences and strength of schedule and all the NCAA rules that come along with it. It just makes it so, it makes it so hard. Like as a college football fan to kind of, you know, cheer for the smaller schools, at least, I guess is a good way to put it because you you just know that they won't actually no matter how good they are they're still going to be handicapped by something whatever it may be and 
again, I don't want to. I'm going to keep going back to basketball here because uh, this is another great kind of reference. Here is Bellarmine, Bellarmine University, which is me and Josh's. It's a, another hometown team that we like to root for because they're they're a small school. They're finally Division One. We'll look back. I think it was two, three years ago when their first year in Division One, they m- killed their conference. They they won the the conference tournament. They were the best team in their conference far and away, and they still did not make the March Madness tournament. And it's because their their transition from going Division Two to Division One. And I do understand it to a a a consent. I understand why that rule is in place because most teams don't have the success that Bellarmine did have. It takes them a few years to get um, accustomed to the Division One play style um, rule changes and all that stuff. But I mean, it's still a unfortunate circumstance because I think Bellarmine still has two years of ineligibility before they can make the playoffs, or maybe it's one. But let's say three years from now when they are eligible. Uh, uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I, I just want to say I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, Deontay Johnson just caught his first touchdown reception since 2021 week 11, I believe is what it said. He just he just snapped a 119 game streak without a touchdown. Or, sorry, a 119 reception streak without a touchdown. If I'm being honest, that was probably the worst news you've ever gave me because hey, fuck you. Um, I completely forgot today was Thursday, and oh. I forgot there was a game, and I did not <laughs> edit or change any of my fantasy lineups, and I know in one league that I have, I sat De- DeAndre Hopkins last week, and I was going to start him this week. <sighs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> Let's see what he's done. Probably gone off, hasn't he? I think he's at oh, like 16 yeah, I... right now. Yeah, but he's gotten ten fucking tar- He's gotten four four <laughs> catches for sixty yards, but he's gotten ten ten targets. Son, son of a. <laughs> All right. Anyways, what were you saying? <clears throat> if you even remember, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, you're good. But basically, like, Bellerman's been so good. But what happens whenever they are finally eligible for the March Madness tournament? Um, that they aren't as good as they were. Now they're obviously they're coached by a. A, in my opinion, which again, this could be just because they are a hometown school, uh, Coach Davenport, who is a, and like I said, in my opinion, he is a Hall of Fame coach. Um, and so that might be why they are so good. He has a one of a kind offense. No, no other team runs the type of offense he does. It's like, it's literally, you, you, it, may, it makes your mouth water watching him run his offense. And so that's probably why. As, as, so as, as odd as it is, it reminds me of the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's just constant ball movement. No one's standing still. You see teams like Kentucky that that have all the talent in the world. You see, you still see players walking around or just standing there waiting for the ball, and when they don't get the ball, they throw a fit. No, like Bellerman discontinued. I'm, I'm, I'm getting carried away here. I'm, I'm talking basketball. Um, <laughs> anyways... I don't even know where I was going with this besides... Long story he, short... Bellerman is really good, but they don't get the respect they deserve, but they should have made the tournament regardless because they were really good. And you see that with some of these small schools, Jay Madison not even being bowl eligible, but uh, teams, Air Force, not going to even have a chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Football sucks sometimes. <laughs> uh, and, and also, one more thing. I do want to compare this to basketball because this is popping to my mind. Um, something that I think we are going to get a little bit more of with, especially with all the conference changes in football. Um, you see in basketball, these teams play each other all the time that are, are not in the same conference. They'll never be in the same conference like Kentucky. Again, I'm just bringing that and bring this as a, 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 um, a, something, a reference just because I know their schedule. They're playing teams like Miami this year. They're playing teams like Kansas, um, those are matchups that we will probably never see in college football. So what that means is these small schools that are just really playing their conference and they're dominating their conference, we'll never know how good they are if a team like James Madison went up against Texas or something like that. They'll never get the chance to. And what if like James Madison is a better football team than Texas, you know? And then, like, mm-hmm. you're really, like, that even makes their case even stronger for a playoff spot, but we'll never get that. And I think that it is starting to get a little bit more um, 
those big time matchups, but it's not to where it should be. Yeah. Yeah, I I uh I fully agree with you. So, Parker, week eight was a good one. We we missed two weeks. We're, or we're two weeks behind, uh, somewhat, sort of, more like a week and a half, I guess is a better way to put it. Week nine has happened. So let's, let's talk about some week nine. Let's talk about some week nine. And, uh, I mean, the first thing that just comes to mind immediately, uh, at least I can see it kind of first on our little, um, you know, our little itinerary that we like to write up. Uh, Oklahoma loses 33-38 to to Kansas. What were your thoughts when you saw that score, and what were your thoughts at all if you watched the game at all? Uh, we finally have seen the the um, a hiccup in Dylan Gabriel's game. And I know back when they beat Texas, I was so high on Dylan Gabriel. I was like, this is finally his breakout game. You know, he's going to potentially bring them to the playoffs. Um, we finally have found a, a game where he has not been the same quarterback that we have seen all the rest of the season. Um, he had a pretty good completion percentage. He went 14 for 19, but he only had 171 yards, not a single passing touchdown, and an interception. Um, and then on, if you continue going on, I mean, just the receivers were, they were the dropping passes. They were getting targets but they were just dropping passes, couldn't couldn't hold the ball in, and then it was just honestly a complete dominating game. It was a high-scoring game, but a complete dominating game from um, Kansas. Kansas came in there, played their butt offs. They had nothing to lose, and they were, they were slinging that thing. Um, their quarterback had a, a solid game, not, no, nothing eye-popping, but overall it just seemed like Kansas wanted it more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was at home for Kansas. Um, I'm pretty sure it, mi- it might have been their homecoming game. So, you know, it kind of means a little bit more. Um, and their running back had a pretty stellar game. Uh, actually, uh, quite frankly, ev- or their quarterback had a good rushing game as well, uh, to, mm-hmm. to be to be honest. And even their backup running back had a hell of a— I mean, fucking ran the ball at will against Oklahoma. Um <clears throat> Which, I mean, honestly, seems like that's what won them the game. Uh, just a very, you know, well-balanced run attack by uh, Kansas, and it, and it worked. And we see Oklahoma take their f- uh, <clears throat> sorry first loss of the season and uh, to a good Kansas team, but definitely a team that you could have beat and uh, not one you want to drop, especially when we're getting to the, to the crunch time of, uh, you know, the season. Yeah, and then just looking at their schedule, obviously, I mean, they have a pretty big game coming up this week against Oklahoma State, um, but really... I've got some stuff to say about that game later on. They really do not have that tough of a schedule coming up. Like, this this Kansas loss was so detrimental to their playoff hopes. And now, they ha- they're obviously, there is a good chance that they're probably going to have to play Texas again, but... Um, man, that that is a tough one when you have such high hopes to make the playoffs to to drop. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we already we already mentioned Kansas State a little bit. Um, or actually, no, we didn't. <laughs> I'm completely wrong. Uh, they just seemingly dropped the same exact score on Houston. Uh, they beat TCU last week, forty-one to three. They beat Houston this week, forty-one to zero. Kansas State is on a crazy three-game run. By the way, mm-hmm. they have looked they have looked insane in their last three games, and they have a good game against Texas coming up this week. I believe at Texas, so that's going to be one that I keep my eye on for sure. But Kansas State is looking good, man. And if I had to say that Texas could lose another game this year, especially with no Quinn Ewers, um, I would. I, I might. I honestly, you know, I'll save it for the predictions. But you, you can see me say, you can see me showing Kansas State some love. I'll say that. And the thing with Kansas State, you know, like beginning of the season, they dropped an early one to Missouri, and that was before we really knew how good Missouri was. Um, and then two weeks later, they dropped another one to Oklahoma State. And 
a team that was just in the Sugar Bowl the year before, really, we, we everybody kind of thought, like, wow, this is a really disappointing season that they're having. And now, like you said, they, they are coming off three really good wins after that last loss to Oklahoma State. And, and yeah, I mean, this is they're going to they're gonna give Texas everything they want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're going to give Texas a hell of a game for sure, especially coming off of the hot streak like you said. Um, <clears throat> do you have any games that you, you noticed uh, in particular at all? Yes, um, just except, because... except for except for maybe the obvious ones that we'll yeah, obviously right. get to U- USC. And now I was I was I was briefly watching this game and then I stopped because I basically wrote Uf- USC off again, and they just continue to let me down whenever I hype them up. Which again we'll get into that later. Um, but they they continuously give up all these points and I know you have you have preached it since the, we started this podcast how bad the defense is in the Pac-12 and I so thought bad. I thought that California had basically ran away with this game they're like oh, okay there's no way they're coming back but Caleb Williams once again making headlines he brings his team to a one point victory final score of that game it was 50 to 49 um Again, I didn't watch the end of it, so I don't really know what happened. Um, I'm just lo- I'm straight looking off stats right now, and Caleb Williams threw for 369 yards and two touchdowns. Um, also ran in two touchdowns on his own, so a four touchdown game for him altogether, and without a interception. So, just really, it's it's the Caleb Williams show over there at USC. And basically, he's like, if you want to catch a ball, you can. But other than that, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And I'm just trying to, at this point with the season they've had, I'm just trying to raise my draft stock. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to raise your draft stock or, I mean, honestly, there's no point in me saying this because he's already out of the race, in my opinion. But if you're going to try to put your name back in the Heisman race, uh, that's one way to do it is lead your team single-handedly to a close win. Um, granted it's over a terrible team, but I mean, a win's a win. Um, but yeah, like you said, I've been preaching it. I'll continue to preach it. That defense is so bad and, uh, I just don't, I, yeah, I, I don't see that USC team really winning convincingly at all for maybe the rest of the season. Um, no, not at all. Cause, cause they, they, they don't have an easy schedule for the, they actually have, maybe one of the hardest schedules I've seen to date. Uh, they have Washington next, then Oregon, and then UCLA. So, wow. I mean, they could lose the next three games. They they could finish the season. Uh, I just closed out of it, so now I don't I know the record. Give me a moment. They could finish the season 7-5. and five Right. With Caleb Williams at QB. Like, that is... That's sad. That is really sad because Caleb Williams is such a great talent and to have pretty much, I mean, you know, it, it it's hard to say, but I'm going to, I'm just going to say it, uh, to have your season single-handedly ruined by your defense, it's got to hurt. I mean, I, I can only imagine what his head is thinking right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, there's yeah. only there's only so much you can tell uh, as a quarterback, as a, just a, a player of the team. There's only so much you can tell your defense. Like, he, obviously, Caleb Williams is not the one out there picking up a wide receiver. He's not the one trying to stop the run game. And I'm just I'm sitting here looking at every game, and it just it, it seems like USC's defense continuously gets worse week in and week out. Um, like obviously, 49 points to California. They let. Utah score 34, which is actually a fairly low game whenever you that low scoring game compared to the other ones. I mean, 48 to Notre Dame, 41 to Arizona, 41 to Colorado. They let San Jose State drop almost 30 on them. I mean, like this team or this defense is just god awful. It's terrible. It's bad. It's bad. And you know what? I'm gonna say it again, Parker. I said it a couple. Like I said it a couple weeks ago, and I believe it even more now. I think you and me could score on that USC defense. 
I nope. I'm still. I'm. I'm. I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah. Like I said last week, you can die on that hill. You. You still can. I'm hey, not, I'm not. You got it. You gotta have faith in us, bro. Listen, we're no college athlete. No work blows. But are, are you, know, you talking? Are you talking about like on the one yard line? All you need is one yard. Or are you talking about a full length drive that they're only going to you? Hmm. We could let's start at the ten. We could start at the ten. They're they're ten. They're ten. So we're we're ten. ten. We're, we're ten yards away from scoring. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're in the so, we're in the red zone. We start okay. in the red zone. I think we're scoring. Are you thinking you're just gonna find a gap and get the ball thrown to you, or you think you're running that ball? I'm thinking I'm just gonna look one way. They're all gonna go that way because they're so bad, and then I'll look the other way and throw it to you in the end zone. Oh, so you're quarterback? I don't have to be quarterback. No, I, you're you're a, you're a one man ship. I'm I mean, not, no, I mean, no. I'm not. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm just doing the whole thing by myself. Maybe if you have Caleb Williams throwing the ball, maybe you can get it done. Well, uh, if Caleb Williams is my QB, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure I could. I, I could run up one of them boys. Yeah, man. I just, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sold on that take. I'm not sold on that take. That. It... <laughs> Come on, you gotta have faith in me. You gotta have some faith in me. Let's set it up. USC. The the athletic director. Let's set it up. I want I want a full eleven v one. Eleven v. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the whole USC defense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we hop right into our teams now. I think this is um, a great way. Do you want to start with my team, or you want to start with? Uh, well, well, no, well, real quick, real quick before we do, I just want to say, fucking Arizona, man, Arizona, uh, they are. I mean, they're they're practically the sleeper team of the Pac-12. I mean, they are just on a tear right now, and they do not look like they're slowing down. Yeah, I mean, they have some bad losses. Don't get me wrong. When I say a bad loss, I mean Mississippi State is the laughing stock of the SEC this year. I, I if I had to bet, which they don't play this year, unfortunately, but if Mississippi State and Vanderbilt played each other this year. Vanderbilt would beat them by twenty eight points. <laughs> Mississippi State's really bad. That's a really bad loss on them. But other than that, I mean, you took Washington to the wire. You, obviously, you beat us, or you you uh, almost beat USC, and then you you dog walk Washington State, and now you beat Oregon State. I mean, they play they play US or UCLA this week. I'm I'm curious. I mean. It's going to be one to watch. It's can they, be can they continue watch. it? Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, which one of us should go first? Uh, I guess we can start with the losing side. All righty. Tennessee, 33. Kentucky, 27. Parker, what happened in that game? And uh, what are your thoughts coming off of that game? Um, you guys came off of a bye week. And uh, it was a home game. Kept it close, kept it close, but in the end, it wasn't enough. So uh, yeah, what are your what are your thoughts? So I want to look at the good old saying: the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and I, I got a little rant here. Uh, so first of all, let's just start out with the good. Let's start. Let's completely start off with the good. And when I say good, I mean really good. Devin Leary, Devin Leary, finally, finally showed why he was the best quarterback transfer in the the transfer class this year. He threw 28 for 39. He threw for almost 400 passing yards, two inter or, whoa, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. Um, as well as he also had 21 yards running the ball. But I mean, um, oh well. And then. With following that, Dane Key had himself a day. He had him a day. Seven catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown. I love that, even though we lost, even though we lost that game, I love that the offense finally came together. We finally figured something out that works. We we weren't trying to do too much. We just worked as a unit. And even with that, that shit O-line that Kentucky has this year, we were still able to... to do whatever we want passing the ball, especially in that second half. That second half, man, we we were 
we were just exchanging touchdown or Tennessee kick a field goal, we go down, score a touchdown. Tennessee kick a field goal, we score down, go down, score a touchdown. And like we we're just trading touchdowns for field goals all like and I'm like I'm taking that all day. Tennessee couldn't stop us at some points. Then let's talk about the bad. The bad is um, my man Ray Davis, which he didn't have a bad game. He had 42 yards and a touchdown. But what I want to kind of it's pretty bad watching. for his standards, right? I'd right. Say. This is coming off two weeks, and and really this week, but I'll I'll, I'll say two weeks uh, against Missouri. Obviously, there was the bye week in between, but Missouri as well. The Missouri game. I don't put that on Ray Davis because if you did watch that Missouri game, Ray Davis in the first quarter did whatever he wanted to. He was running the ball at will, like literally, like he was getting eight eight plus yards of carry in that first quarter, and he got the ball. Like I, I think I forgot the, the exact stat, but it was something like in the first like first quarter alone, he had like twelve carries, and then the rest of the game he only had eight carries. So. I don't want to put that on Ray Davis, the Missouri game, because I think that was just bad coaching and wanting to change the game plan and stuff like that. This week, the and now obviously towards the end we were losing, so we were passing the ball more. But And Devin Leary was just having himself a day. But when we did give the ball to Ray Davis, he really couldn't do anything. He he, he was just getting stuffed, and, and that could be a reasoning for That could also be that, that O-line that I just talked about being just so bad. But Ray Davis yeah. didn't do anything at all. Hey, I mean, Devin Leary, like you said, he had a great game. Uh, it only took his first game throwing over probably like 16 passes uh, to get it. But, I mean, he definitely showed out once he got the opportunity. I mean, listen, you give the guy the opportunity to show out, and he's going to show out. You know what I mean? 28 right. for 39, 300, almost 400 yards and two touchdowns. That's a hell of a game. Uh, mm -hmm. it, just, it, it just seems like the run game couldn't go anywhere that day. Um you know, from when you look at Ray Davis, you look at a guy who you expect to take over a game literally every week, and it just seems like Tennessee game planned very well for him, and they were able to stop him very well. And then and on that, the on the flip side, I I honestly kind of blanked out for a moment, so I'm not actually sure if you mentioned this already, but your all's run defense looked a little sketchy that yes, day. Yes, so and, uh, that is the ugly that I want to talk about for a minute. The ugly was our not just our run defense, but our defense in general. Um, and really quick, before I get into that, uh, it could have also the reason Ray Davis had such a bad game is, I mean, I'm sure, like you said, I'm sure Tennessee game planned for uh, Ray Davis. That's the only weapon that Kentucky has proven to have. They don't need to worry about the passing game because Devin Leary can't throw a football. And so maybe that's why it was the way it was. But then you look at this defense, dude, and man, man, it was bad. It was bad. You, I mean, and it's not even the fact that we're just giving up big yards. We were giving up big yards, but the penalties, dude, like if, like if either false starts or um, defensive pass interferences or just stupid stuff. Like I remember in the in the fourth quarter, it was a really like crucial play. We got a stop on third down. It was like third and long. And for no reason, our guy just did had a late hit on um, one of Tennessee's players. And I'm like, and a flag was thrown, unnecessary roughness or whatever it was. And they ended up getting like 15 yards on it and like a first down. And I'm like, and then Tennessee ended up scoring on that play. And I'm like, dude, the, the penalties are just, it's it's not even, it's not, it's just not disciplined. It's not a disciplined defense at all. And it was something that at the beginning of the season, like the Florida game, right, we were so high, or I was so high on Kentucky's defense, and I was just like, that. this is our our, our run game and our defense is going to be our saving point because obviously Leary isn't getting the job done. It's going to be up to our defense to, to hold them, hold whatever team we're playing to a limited amount of points, and then Ray Davis is going to do the rest. I mean, at and the beginning of the season, I'm, I feel like almost everyone, as far as the internet goes, was saying, hey, Kentucky's defense, you know, look out for it this year. And, I mean, it's just every, like, very, very similar to USC. Every week that goes by, our defense looks worse and worse. 
straight up. It just continues. It's like I'm not seeing any improvement, unlike our offense, that every week I keep seeing more things that I like. And we were bound to have an offensive game like this. And, I mean, it's just our, our – it was – that loss was 100% on our defense. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunate too because I know, as a Louisville fan, I just know if Kentucky's defense just falls for the rest of the season, when one, when they step foot in L and N, and to play the Cardinals, for some reason that defense is just gonna ignite for one game and one game only. If 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 it's gonna happen in any game, it's gonna be against us, and that's just our that's just our luck to be honest. But and like. <clears throat> this is the first time in, in a, a long time that Kentucky has lost three straight games. Um, and it, to me, if you're asking me honestly, this this does make a – this is not the goal that we set for ourselves. It's not the goal that I had. Uh, and it's because I, we probably were going to lose three games anyways. We we're probably going to lose to Tennessee, but obviously Georgia and Alabama too. Um, but the Missouri loss was such a, a big blow. Um the season is not the season is not dead yet though, and I know Kentucky fans, and I even talked to some. They are writing the season off, and they're just they're so ready for basketball season. Um, but I mean, we still play Alabama. We could do something that the Wildcats have not done in a very long time. Do I think it's going to happen? Absolutely not. But has Kentucky ever beat Alabama? Oh, I'm sure we have. I mean, I'm sure it's not been. It's been a while, but I'm sure I'm, I'm guaranteed we have. Um, I'm actually interested. I'm actually interested to know that we have four games left. Two of them we should easily win, being South Carolina and Mississippi State. Alabama will probably lose that, and then we play Louisville. No disrespect to Louisville, but we could win that game as well. We could finish the season. Eight and four. What were you about to say? I know you're about to say something. Uh, you guys have beat them twice. Of all time, in all time. Yeah, out of uh, you guys have played them forty times. They've won thirty eight. Oh. You guys have won twice. Wow, I did not know we've only the, played them way more than forty times. The last time was in nineteen ninety seven. So yeah, so you're looking at twenty twenty five years. 26 years to be exact since we longer than there. that or actually no you're probably right sorry 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 <laughs> got my math wrong um but we still have a chance to um in tuscaloosa too all right sorry <laughs> eight and four make a bowl game and obviously i'm talking to some of these kentucky irrational kentucky fans and they're like oh we're not even gonna make a bowl game this year we're that bad we're gonna finish with five wins i'm like dude First of all, even if we don't beat South Carolina, we're going to beat Mississippi State. We're going to we're going to dog walk Mississippi State. Yeah, I, I, you, you guys play Mississippi State this week. You only need one more win to be bowl eligible. So I don't know what Kentucky fans you're talking to, but I mean, come on. It's it's what just, are we doing? It's just, what are we doing here? It's just Kentucky fans, man. They just <laughs> And and, and, and I will and, say and even if you somehow lose to Mississippi State, you still play South Carolina, and they've looked horrible too this year. So, I mean, you know? And so, at the beginning of the season, this is before the podcast was even a thing, blah, blah, blah. This is beginning of the season. I was watching a different podcast. Um, it was more of an SEC podcast. It wasn't necessarily a Kentucky-based podcast, but they were talking about Kentucky in that episode, and, and what they said was completely true. This season, what's going to happen is... We're going to start out 5-0. and We're going to be on top of the world going into Georgia. We're really going to think that we have a chance of beating Georgia. We lose to Georgia. We lose to Alabama. We drop a game we shouldn't have lost to. Or a game that we shouldn't have lost, Missouri. We should not have lost that game. And all the fans after that are just like, oh, well, when's, when's basketball season? We're a basketball school anyways. And it's just, it's so frustrating. And I hate shitting on my own fan base but like Kentucky's fan base needs to be better dude like seriously people are are done with stoops and I'm like <clears throat> I mean there's so uh, much football quick. to be played yeah I just want to say real quick I feel the same exact way about Louisville um 
I I feel like I might be the only person in the world that's willing to give Kenny Payne another chance. I feel like every other Louisville fan is pretty much done with him after two exhibition games that don't give a fucking shit about the actual season as a whole. Um, granted, uh, sure, it was a Division two school. Like, yeah, that's really bad. Uh, that's really bad. These, guy, these, guy, these guys just got to campus like a month and a half ago. Uh, like, he has... Uh, I mean, um, well, our, our first game's Monday, so we'll we'll see how the fuck that goes. But I mean, I, I feel like I'm like a part of the one percent that is just like, you know what? Like, give him a, give him another shot. Let's see what he does. We have way better talent than we did last year. I mean, you know, like in my opinion, everybody deserves a second chance. I get it. His first season was. Re- really bad like really bad like historically bad like all time um <clears throat> but the guy comes from a good coaching tree i mean it's just true like he does and you know like we'll we'll see what happens but n- not a not a basketball podcast quite yet we're not at that point yet but uh the so only we'll, thing we'll, I, we'll, we'll go back to football but i will i do want to touch on that just for a second um the reason I think the reason why Louisville fans are so short, short fused with Kenny Payne is, again, no offense, Louisville basketball is a, a, a train wreck right now, like a train wreck. They they haven't been able to to rebound since Rick Pitino, obviously that whole scandal. Chris Mack tried to save him, Chris Mack fell flat on his face, and now Kenny Payne is kind of inheriting the same troubles that Mack did, and. Four games for a school like Louisville that is historically a, a top 10, maybe even a top five college basketball team, like that, like in just history of the bas- of basketball. I mean, yeah, if, four games, if, if we're not a blue blood, we're a fringe blue blood school. No, you so. guys, well, far and away, Louisville's a blue blood. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Louisville is a blue blood, but I mean, I think just four, four games, winning four games out of 36 is it's unacceptable. I didn't know if unacceptable was the word. But anyways, um, I, I do know what you're saying. Louisville fans are already giving up, and the season hasn't even started. Yeah, that that type of shit just kind of pisses me off. But it is what it is, I guess. I, 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 you know, my opinions differ a lot from other people, obviously. But I guess, um, did you have any more to, to talk about in, in uh, your all's game from last week? Or do you want to kind of move on? I, I will say I am I am upset that we are and I talked to you about this um, not on a podcast but just like just us talking I am upset that right we are I don't want to say wasting but we are losing Ray Davis after this year and like everybody knew how good of a running back he is and like and like I said like I said to you he had a chance to like he was fully committed to Alabama and then switched last second to conduct Kentucky and like that that was shocked the world that Kentucky seriously got a, not just Ray Davis but also Devin Leary like that is like the craziest backfield in the SEC that we d- and we just pulled it off in one year it wasn't like we saw these guys develop like we just had these guys come in and we are wasting these talents with losses like Missouri and Tennessee Georgia is kind of eh, you know just Georgia mm. but I mean the, this was the year that we were supposed to separate ourselves from at least the SEC East. It was supposed to be us and Georgia, us and Georgia. We were going to run away with the thing. And now we're fighting to, to even stay in the middle of the pack now. And so that is kind of discouraging as a Kentucky fan to see us waste these guys uh, last year in, in college. But, I mean, just got a gotta game by game, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate for sure. Uh, I, I, yeah, the season's not over. The season's not over there. You know, there's opportunity for you guys to upset, you know, you guys have two games actually left in the season where you could make some upsets and it's, uh, I still think you guys should look forward to the games anyways, just because of the, the name value and the, the, you know, the fact that anything could happen. And also, you know, you, you don't play Alabama all the time, you know what I mean? So that's always a unique game to watch or 
you know you, you know what i mean like that's always a unique game anyways so mm-hmm. Um, and I, I am glad that we're playing Alabama this late and the season has played out the way it has because if for whatever reason we can beat Alabama, this would be – this is it's going to be like – it's going to bring everybody back, you know? Like everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, we beat Alabama. Like we're yeah. back. Football's back. I wonder, I, to, I, I wonder if that would put you guys back in the top 25 if you beat them. Oh, uh, I'm sure it would. I'm sure it, it would, would, but you never fucking know with the guy rankings. Because, I mean – it wasn't like we we lost to Mississippi State, a bad loss like that. Our three losses are are all top fifteen teams. Yeah, you know. So I mean, you know, I, it it might, but I mean that that's that's such a stretch to even think about. We're still two weeks away from that. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyways, let's jump shift shift ship <laughs> to um the Louisville Cardinals. They had a more or less must win game to stay in the ACC championship conversation. They played the Duke Blue Devils at uh, Ellen and Stadium. It wasn't just a a victory by the Louisville Cardinals. It was a victory shutout, twenty three to zip. Josh, take it away from here. Um, our second ever, or actually, might have been our first ever shutout over a ranked opponent, um, in program history which is a huge feat for us as a program. And um, just a very good game by the boys overall. I mean, obviously, obviously, you don't even have to look at the box score to see that it was a defensive masterclass by the Louisville Cardinals. Um, Riley Leonard wasn't, you know, I'd be a, I'd be a mist to say that Riley Leonard was a hundred percent healthy because he definitely was not um he did play however though he went nine for 23 121 yards and one interceptions one interception no touchdowns so definitely not a good game by any means by riley leonard probably one of his worst on the season to be honest as well but um I I feel like th- there's this repeating pattern, Parker, where in these big games, these big moments, or honestly, not even in the big games, just as of late, to be quite honest with you, we have a tendency to shut down top running backs. You saw it with Audric Estime, and you saw it here with Jordan Waters. Sorry. Yeah, Jordan Waters from Duke. Uh, they didn't run the ball very much. They only ran the ball for a total of... 11 11 carries between their two backs um so you know they they, they didn't run the ball very much at all but it still stopped them still allowed them to get no big plays on us uh we we shut them out pretty much in the run game the passing game they they out they beat us out in that one but that's you know I'll, i'll get to that here in a little bit but just a dominating defensive performance by louisville and uh, I don't know if you watched it, but I obviously watched it, and uh, it was definitely I'll like I watched a little bit. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely like it, it was it was something to see. I'll tell you that if you're a fan of defense, it was something to see for sure. Because going into that game, you know, everyone was saying, "Hey, this might be a game of defense." Like Duke's defense is elite, and I'm pretty sure you and me said that last week or two weeks ago. Going into this game, we were we were both saying, "Hey, Duke's defense, uh, they're elite. Like, l- look out for them." And right. um, I guess to flip it back over to the Louisville Cardinals, we saw that uh, maybe they weren't as elite as we thought. Jawar Jordan, twenty-one carries, one hundred sixty-three yards, and two touchdowns on the day in his first game back after injury. Um. The guy's a dog. The guy's a dog. Jawar Jordan's him, and uh, one of the the be- one of the best backs in college ball. Uh, and it's a joy to watch him in person and on TV uh, every week for sure. I mean, he continuously continuously puts up video game numbers. Has yet to really. F- Find his, the only the only match that we have found for Jawar Jordan this year is himself, and when I say that, I mean him just getting hurt, right? That's the only way you have some teams have been or anybody has been able to stop him is his own self. 
there's no defense that has been able to 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 find an answer to stopping Jordan. And again, this is something that we talked about earlier today. Actually, is and it's kind of kind of you know it's it's kind of just a question: Is it Jawar Jordan is that good, or is it Louisville's offensive line? You know, I think it's a little bit of both because our offensive line is really good. Uh, it, it, it's just a fact. I mean, the fact that Jawar Jordan has all these holes that he's able to get through and the, he, the, the fact that he has any running room at all, I mean, says a lot about our offensive line. And then when you look at the... When, when you look at the passing game, I mean, Jack Plummer has all the time in the world to get the ball off. So our O-line is definitely good uh, for sure. But I also think Jawar Jordan, it, it, it has a little bit with him too because, you know, I, I mentioned it to you earlier, like you said in our off-air conversation, uh, Jawar Jordan, his ball carrier vision in order to see those holes and then his speed to hit the holes is – you know, it's a pretty elite level. And, um, you know, because not many running backs have that. Not many running backs can see that hole and then burst through it like Jawar Jordan does. Because, I mean, if Jawar Jordan sees a hole, I mean, you can pretty much almost call that a house call anytime. Um, and, right. you know, not, ma- not many running – you don't see many running backs with that ability. No, not at all. I mean – I'm I'm looking at his his stats. Did did he get hurt last year, or does he just did he just not have the uh, did he just not have the starting role? Um, last year you said, yeah. Uh, no, he was the starter last year, but I just don't think we. Honestly, last year I, I really don't know what the hell was going on last year. We were still under Satterfield, uh, and he was kind of a, an embarrassing coach. So I I honestly don't know. I don't think he got hurt but i would have to look back at the, the team last year to remember the only the only reason i say that is because I'm, I'm i have his stats put up throughout the like his college career and so last year he only ran the ball 142 times this year he's already ran it and that's the entire season um he's already ran it 110 times this year and the the thing that is so eye-popping to me looking at these stats is last year he rushed for 815 yards this year alone, with what um, four or five games left, he's already rushed for eight hundred and twenty-four. So he's already passed all of last year. And then you don't don't even don't even look at the touchdowns. The touchdowns are just stupid. He scored four touchdowns all last year, and he's already scored ten this year running the ball. Yeah, he's definitely having a breakout season for sure this year. Uh, and I, I did look it up. I I forgot about him, but we actually had a. Uh, two running backs who kind of split carries with him much like this year to be honest with you but uh Jawar Jordan just didn't really have that breakout type of year like he's having this year um uh and uh the other two running backs were also not that Maurice Turner and Isaac Garendo were bad but the other two running backs we had last year were also just I don't I don't know if maybe they're per- Production was just better or what it was but they just they seemed like they had just had more yards or better usage i guess is a better way to put it uh last year compared to garendo and uh, turner so to put, to, to put it simply oh. to put it to put it simply sorry to interrupt uh no, J- jawar jordan is more of the starter this year than he was last year i guess is that, a better yeah, way to put it yeah I, I, I see where you're coming from there but this begs the question now Jordan has one year of eligibility left. He's had a monster season. And if you ask me, this is probably the highest his draft stock is going to be is after this year. Do you think he would return for a senior season? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I lean more towards no, mainly because, like you said, he's having a monster season. He's a top 10 running back in the nation. Um. And like you said, I think this is probably as high as his draft stock will get unless he can repeat or do better next year if he were to come back. Um, The thing is, is Jawar Jordan's not really built for the NFL. 
and it, it kind of hurts to say, like, you know, as a Louisville fan and as a fan of him, but he is small. He's a small guy. And the NFL, you know, they, they like they like to have some meat on their backs. Um, now, granted, I'm more than positive Jawar Jordan can put on some weight if he really has to. And I'm sure his draft stock would go up if he did that. Um, but, I mean, his, his speed alone almost kind of counterbalances that fact anyways like his right. speed his speed alone is almost kind of reminiscent of jameer gibbs a little bit um and that's kind of this is like because I, I don't know if you remember a couple years ago for kentucky our running back benny snell who at one point was seriously like he was actually in the the heisman race um he after he had one more year left if he wanted to return but he went to the draft because like his draft stock was so high and he was more of a, a beefy, just like contact wanting running back. Like he he embraced the contact. He obviously that did not translate to the NFL whatsoever. We you obviously saw when he did play for the Steelers, which I think he is still in the league. He just doesn't get any touches. Um, but when he did play for the Steelers, it was his speed. He had no speed. He he had the he had the the vision. Like he saw the hose and he knew what to do. But he just never had the speed or elusiveness to really get something going or get some momentum. Unlike Jordan, who may not be the biggest one, but he does have that elusiveness that you just, it's hard to tackle someone like that. And so, you know, it's kind of, you he's you got to find that middle ground, you know. You need that that speed and elusiveness, but you also need that meat, that, that, that beefiness. Mm-hmm. And pause, pause. Which he, he's also not like... He's also not easy to tackle, though, either. Like, I don't really know how to put it. Like, it's not his speed that I'm talking about, though. Because he'll get hit, and he'll just stay up and keep running. Like, he's he's not an easy guy to tackle. He's very elusive. He has sneaky power. He can he can put you on your ass if he has to. And very, very similar to, which I know Nick Chubb has put on a lot of, a lot of weight since into the NFL but if you remember how Nick Chubb was when he first entered the the NFL he was not as big as he is now Um, but if you remember back at at Alabama or no I'm sorry at at, uh, Georgia and then um, his first couple years in the league he was just that nobody could tackle him he was just really hard to tackle and that's how Jordan is yeah yeah and I think if he continues if he continues the season the way it's going I think it'd be very hard for him to deny going to the league. Um, there's going to be a huge argument, though, uh, for him to stay. Because uh, as we know, NIL is a thing now. And, um, you know, if anybody's NIL value is skyrocketing to the moon after this season, I mean, we're, we're, we're looking one right there, number 25 on the Louisville Cardinals. His, his NIL value might skyrocket this offseason. And uh, if he gets a good enough offer from you know one of these sponsors or something, he he could he, we could very well see him back in a Louisville Cardinals jersey for his senior year of college. Um, yes, but which would at also the same time... no, you're good. Uh, I was just gonna say which would be awesome, but you know I, I would hate to see his stock drop because he has a lackluster season compared to this season. That and not even that he's gonna have a lackluster season. It's all obviously it's it's the the thing that you hope never happens to a college athlete or just an athlete in general is an injury happening. And so, yeah, you can chase the money now for one more year and then potentially never really get a shot in the NFL, or you can go now where you're pretty much guaranteed at least a, a, to be drafted and sign a, a three-, four-year contract. So you already know, I mean, you're comparing one year to four years, you know? I mean... That's just one other thing to think about is there could potentially be an injury. We saw it last week or uh, two weeks ago against Pitt. He did get hurt. Um, so, I mean, that's another reason to, to whenever you are you have a chance to go to the NFL, you take it. It's just because you'd never know. Yeah. And I another reason why I don't see him realistically coming back next year is because he'd be a sixth-year college player. Uh, I, I, I'm sure hearing that might have just made you open your eyes a little bit, kind of shocked. But it no, would, I, it, it would. I knew it, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it would be a six year of college. So I, I think you know, I think age kind of plays into that a little bit because 
I think as a college player, you got to be aware of your age as far as if you want to enter the draft. Um, and you know, you know, these teams don't don't like themselves as Stetson Bennett very much. So, uh, right. I'm sure I'm sure he's keeping tabs on that. But it would be awesome. I don't think it'll happen, but it would be awesome. Hey, you never I know. I mean, what if what if a circumstance happens and Louisville, which is another thing I kind of want to talk about. Um, but let's say, just say for the sake of uh, this conversation that Louisville wins out, they beat Florida State in the ACC championship, but they are ranked number five come playoff rankings, and they are just outside of the the playoffs. That could be enough motivation for Jordan to be like, nah, we're getting to these playoffs. I want to, see, I want to taste these playoffs, especially next year being twelve teams. Louisville could easily, realistically, make the playoffs next year. Um, that could be enough motivation for him to be like, you know what, I, I want to try one more time. I want to, I just give it one more final ride. Yeah, yeah, that's a definitely a valid point for sure. Um, man, it, it would, it would, I just. I can't even. I really can't even comprehend that there's like that one percent chance that we could make the playoffs. And it, when I say one percent, I literally mean one percent. Um, but I really, I can't really comprehend that we even have a chance at all because it just seems so, like, it just seems so weird hearing that like you know Louisville football has a chance to make the play the college football playoffs. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the, it's. The, it's just funny. It's funny. The only the only thing that just holds them back, and we talked about it, um, just between me and you, we talked about it, and we were just like, or for me, it's just Louisville just doesn't have the strength of schedule. Yeah, Duke is a, a good team, obviously, um, but other than that, you played Notre Dame, who's not even an ACC opponent in football. Um, you avoid teams like North Carolina, Florida State. Uh, so some of those big powerhouse teams in the ACC this year, you guys do avoid them. And you can't help that. You can't help that. And that goes back to our, our topic earlier today, uh, earlier in the podcast, about teams not – they're 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 doing their job. They're beating whoever they, they've come across. But it's just how the how the cards are dealt. And I just – that's the only thing holding Louisville back is their strength of schedule is dog shit. Yeah. Which I'm excited because I, uh, our schedule for the next like five years just came out the other day, and I'm pretty sure we play we we play Clemson, Florida State, and or North Carolina. We play at least one of those teams um, every year for the next like five years. So, which that I mean, should be fun. I don't think I, I th- if you honestly have to ask me, or if you ask me honestly, North Carolina is going to take a, a crazy drop off next year without Drake May. Um. So I agree. That I don't think North Carolina is going to be like someone to look out for compared to someone like Florida State or maybe even Clemson. Um, but yeah, Clemson and Florida State are obviously the two teams that you want to be playing every every year, especially if you have playoff aspirations. You want to play those teams. Yeah, maybe not this year. For, as far as this year goes, it's really just Florida State. But I mean, historically wise, you just you got to put Clemson in there because. As far as we know, this is just a one season thing, and they could bounce back next week or next year or so. Yeah, I mean Florida. I mean Clemson. It's a, it's the same thing again. We're going. I'm going to go back to basketball here. Um, when a couple years ago, Kentucky was not good at all. We we had a losing record. Uh, this it was the COVID year, so we only played like half the games or something like that. But and we we sucked that year. Whenever you see just on the headlines that Kentucky lost to a, a school. You're like, oh, my God, Louis, or Kentucky really went down. Oh, my gosh, that's such a big win for the other team. That's the same with Clemson. Every time I see Clemson lose, I was like, wow, Clemson really lost that game. It's just because they are they have a good coach. They are historically known to be a, a good team in the ACC and a team not to take lightly. And so when you do see them lose, you're like, wow. Wow, a, a powerhouse team just went down again. Um, so I mean, and Clemson just kind of has that title on them to me, at least, uh, as a team that is a serious threat in the ACC every year. Mm-hmm. So, after our little rants about our teams, 
would you rather do you want to go over specific week 10 games or do you want to do our predictions and then just kind of throw in some kick uh quick conversations about certain games because we're uh we're running a little you know well my only thing with this week coming up ncaa bro you got you guys got to be better you got this week loki sucks this week is not good Really, I mean, there's a couple good games, but I mean, I the way I look at this week is that there's no like clear headliner game, but there's a lot of individual games that matter a lot for their own conference. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, any if any of these bigger, higher seeds lose, it could shake up a lot, and that that's what um, I, I I guess that is something that we could talk about is this week could be a big week for the SEC. Alabama and LSU, Georgia, Missouri uh, play each other. I mean, uh, there was another one, too. Um, Oh, Texas A&M and Mississippi, too. Um, All three of those games could, potentially the lower seed could win every one of those. And, I mean, dude, like, imagine, just imagine a world where uh, Ole Miss... Georgia and Alabama all lose. Oh, you're you're thinking you're, you now now with that Missouri is the clear favorite to win the SEC East. Who would have thought that Missouri actually has a has has a clear shot of winning the SEC East? Then on top of that, if if that were to happen, you're seriously think there there's a possibility Missouri makes the playoffs. Straight up, and so I'm like. This is a big week for the SEC just because teams, the higher seeds, got to win. They got to win this week, or it's gonna it's gonna cause some mayhem. It's a big uh, it's a big take care of business type of week. Yes, yeah, um, but yeah, if you want to just if we want to just go game by game, kind of making our predictions and kind of talk about it, that's fine with me. Okay, cool. Uh, do you want to say where we're at uh, after the the past two weeks, or yes, I guess the past yes. the pat pa- the last week we did at least because we so, didn't do last week. The last week that you guys know uh, was week seven. Just to put, just a reminder before I even say anything about week eight, um, I was standing at uh, a, a outstanding, outstanding record of twenty three and ten. Josh, you were sitting at nineteen and fourteen, which is still good. Which is still good, especially what happened in week eight. It really, you were never out of it. Week eight comes along, and you gain some serious ground. On the week, I picked 11 correct, 6 wrong. You, Josh, were 13 correct, 4 wrong. Oh! 4 wrong. I know. I know. Literally, the the entire... So, I, I was... I was Obviously, I was listening to the podcast. We disagreed on two games. And both of those disagreements, you, you, you picked correctly. <laughs> um, so, what we're looking at overall... I feel like I'm throwing a lot of numbers out here, but overall, we're which one, at, uh, which ones were they that we disagreed on? Yeah, uh, I know I picked Auburn to beat Ole Miss, and oh, I'm sorry, I think I don't know. If, uh, I, I picked Auburn to beat Ole Miss, and Ole Miss won. And then the other one was you picked you picked Duke, didn't you, to beat Florida State? I, I, yeah, I, that's what it was. I picked Duke to beat Florida State. Yeah, yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> um, but obviously we missed we we didn't make any predictions on week nine which it's kind of it's kind of just poetic because neither Louisville or Kentucky I know that yeah they did yeah wait what week was it seven that they didn't play oh no, no week, week, week eight, eight. We week eight, eight they okay never mind. Yeah. never mind I'm I'm just I'm 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 just yapping I'm yapping. I, th- I thought you were talking about the week they both lost yeah never mind I'm just yapping anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so what we're looking at for uh, the, the rankings, or the standings, is I'm sitting at 34 and 16. Josh, you are sitting at 32 and 18. So, just That's like that, good. I lost a lot of ground there, and we're only, I'm only two games up now. I actually didn't hear yours. What, what was yours? I'm 34 and 16, you are 32 and 18. Oh, okay, so I'm only two games back now. Yeah, you're only two okay, games back. Okay, okay, okay. So this could be a big week for me then. This could be a big I'm week. I'm just going to pick what I'm going to have you pick first. I'm just going to pick everything you picked for the rest of the week. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I only had one I only had one good week. So it you might matter. you might actually even 
if I if I copy you, I'm still gonna at the end of the season I'll still beat you. So oh, that's kind of fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, do you want do you want to start it out with the uh, uh, games? Yeah. All right. So starting us off uh, at 12 p.m. Saturday, November 4th, we got Ohio State at Rutgers. Oh, Ohio State. <laughs> not not much to even say about that one. Yeah, I'm 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 also going Ohio State as well. Uh, but. Rutgers has had a pretty decent season this year so far, but still, Ohio State. Next one, we've got Kansas State at Texas. And um, you might have something to say about this. Um, being at Texas, I I'm just gonna I'm gonna take Texas. I think they're just a better overall football club. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm I I could very easily regret this decision come Saturday evening. Uh, you know, yeah, Saturday evening, but no, not even that Saturday afternoon. Yeah, Saturday afternoon, but with no Quinn Ewers and the win streak that Kansas State is on, I'm gonna take Kansas State over Texas at Texas. That's bold, man. That's bold. I knew it, it was is. coming. It I is. knew it was coming. It's just uh, my main thing is is that I haven't seen. I just I haven't seen too much from Malik Murphy, Texas's backup to Quinn Ewers. I haven't seen too much from him, and I really don't know what to think about him. And in the one game of the sample size that we do have from him, uh, you know they beat they beat BYU thirty five to six, but he didn't really have that great great of a game. Like in all honesty, it really wasn't him that won them that game. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I feel v- relatively confident taking Kansas State, but obviously we'll see. Right, right, right. Next up here, we got A&M at Ole Miss. So here is my, this is going to be my my first upset. I'm taking Texas A&M, and right off the bat, I don't feel confident picking Texas A&M, but I am picking them because we have yet to really see that, that upset in the SEC this year that we see every single year. We have really yet to see it. The only thing with that is Texas A&M has a history with their three losses this year. They beat up on bad on bad teams and they fold under pressure to good teams. Ole Miss is pretty good. So, um, but Ole Miss is is just like Kentucky. They are always every year they are bound to lose a game that they are supposed to win. And I think it's going to be Texas A&M. I think they finally get that win that they have been so desperately looking for against a ranked opponent. So I'm taking Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, it is at Ole Miss. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Ole Miss here in, in the battle of uh, old Nick Saban assistants. I think I'm going to go Ole Miss here. Um, I just I don't think they would lose at home especially to an A&M team that's been struggling this year. Um, but to be, in all honesty, I, I wouldn't be surprised if A&M got the W. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's such a toss-up game. Anybody, either team can win this game. Yeah, cause, Either team can blow the other one out, too. Because e- even though they're ranked 11th, I really haven't seen too much, you know, from Ole Miss that makes me say, it, like, it hey, they're insane. It happens every year with Ole Miss. Like, like I said, they're the same as Kentucky. They they start out really strong. They get into the rankings. Then they lose. They usually lose to Alabama every year. Uh, probably use to L- probably lose to LSU every year. And then they, they always have that big loss that you're like, oh, you just blew your season away. And this yeah. Texas A&M game could be it. I mean, uh, yeah, o- Ole Miss, they almost lost to LSU, whose defense is horrible. They almost lost to Arkansas, who's not really that good. And then they almost lost to Auburn. That's three games in a row that they almost lost in. So, they're bound for a loss. Yeah, they're bound for You know what? I'm actually going to flip my pick. Uh, what? I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to flip my pick. I'm, I'm going to go A&M. I'm, I'm taking A&M here. Is that here. the first Flipped pick in the in the history of Take His Whistle podcast. I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. Oh my gosh, what a mouth! <laughs> I didn't look what at. A I, I, I didn't look at their schedule and I didn't look at the games that they've recently played in. But they've almost lost three out of their last four. I think it was. So I am actually not comfortable at all taking Ole Miss there. So I, yeah, I'm flipping. I'm flipping. I'm taking the other hat. I'm going A and M. 
Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Next game, we got Connecticut at Tennessee. I swear to God, if Tennessee loses this after beating Kentucky, <laughs> UConn has one win this season. Dude, like, this should be a dominating performance from Tennessee. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i taking Tennessee. It should be Tennessee. Uh, if they lose, then I will probably laugh my ass off. I would, too. I hope they lose, but I'm picking them. Next game. This one is actually probably one of the better ones of the week. We got uh, Notre Dame at Clemson. Hmm. It's so just like... I just, what version of Sam Hartman are we going to get? You know, are we going to get the Louisville Sam Hartman or are we going to get the USC Sam Hartman? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go Notre Dame here. Um, but this is the same thing as the Texas A&M Ole Miss game. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Clemson wins it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Notre Dame here too. But mainly because I don't think the home field advantage is really going to be there for Clemson. I think that I think that fan base is honestly so discouraged this year, not only because of the losses and how down of a season they're having, but also mm-hmm. because of the way their coach is bashing them every week. Uh, as as fans, he's pretty much just shitting on the fan base week after week, and it's really funny to watch. But I honestly don't think that crowd's gonna be anything too special uh compared to what it's been you know in the past years um so i I don't think notre dame's gonna go into death valley really phased at all um so i think they take it yeah yeah, agreed all right next one we've got arizona state at utah arizona state's not good i know people thought whenever they beat colorado that they actually could be pretty decent but they're, they're not good at all i'm taking utah yeah, I'm going Utah as well, especially after they just lost their home win uh, streak to Oregon. I, I I feel like they're probably pretty pissed off, so I'm going I'm going Utah. Exactly. Um, next one we've got the uh, military bowl, or well, I I I don't know why I called it that. It's it's just whatever. I didn't army I army at Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> So Air Force coming, um, they just they they played uh, who they, uh, Navy. Not was it last week or the week before? Uh, it two was, weeks ago. It was two weeks ago. They they they're coming yeah. off a game against Colorado State. Coming off a game against who? Colorado State. Colorado State. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Well, I very similar to Navy. I don't know too much about Army. I do know they just got the brakes beaten off them by LSU um, a couple weeks ago. So with that in mind and Air Force being undefeated, I'm taking Air Force once again. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't really know too much about like Air Force as a team, but they're ranked and they've been destroying everyone they play. So I'm going Air Force. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we have the second place in the ACC solidification game here uh virginia tech at louisville me and josh will both be at that game another yes. another uh game that we will be attending so like you said if louisville wins this they practically lock up the acc championship um so not the actual championship but a, a spot in the championship game um so you know, you'd think Louisville comes out and handles business because what's on the line. But, as we saw against Pitt, obviously Jawar Jordan was hurt. When they know that they are a better team than the team they're playing, it seems like they don't come out with as much fire as they should compared to teams like Duke or Notre Dame, where they kind of have a chip on your shoulder. You're like, uh, like Louisville's like, are you really saying this team's better than us? Because they're not. So when you have a team that everybody knows Louisville is better than Georgia Tech, um, we haven't really seen them, you know, or well, obviously the the first couple games, yeah, but like since the ACC play started, we haven't seen a game where Louisville has dominated a lower opponent. So I'm taking Louisville, but I hope they come ready to play. Yeah, um, I mean, I can't 
take Virginia Tech. So I'm going. I'm going Louisville. Um, I just hope we handle business. That's all I can really hope for. Next up, we got James Madison at Georgia State. James Madison. James Madison. I still don't know a single thing about the team, but I, I'm, I'm rooting for them to make the playoffs. <laughs> hey, go Dukes, baby. Uh, <laughs> Tulane at East Carolina. Uh, just same exact thing. Don't know a single thing about Tulane. I think they have, they have a really good running back, don't they? I'm pretty sure they I'm do. I'm pretty sure they I do. Know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. I'm taking Tulane. I'm going Tulane, too. Um. Oh, I just closed it by accident. Here we go. Uh, Florida State at Pittsburgh. Can Pittsburgh really do the impossible? Can they? Nah, 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 nah. I'm taking Florida State. I'm taking Florida State. <laughs> imagine they do though. Imagine, imagine Pittsburgh actually pulls it off. If they, they if Pitts, if Pittsburgh State. beats the two best teams in the eight, well, I can't say that yet because it's not solidified. Actually, I'm going to say it because they're my oh, favorite team. Don't don't even don't even put it in if, the universe, dude. Don't even. Put you're it right. In yeah, the you're universe. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. If Pittsburgh can beat the best team in the ACC and potentially the second best team in the ACC, then, I mean, uh, Pittsburgh, fuck Pitt- fuck fuck Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh, I'm 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 switching up Pittsburgh for the playoffs. <laughs> All right. Um, we both took, we're both taking Florida State, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Penn State at Maryland. Um, you know, I, I I fell for this trap before. I think earlier this year. Um, who was it exactly? Was it was it Ole Miss? Or no, I'm sorry, not Ole Miss. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, was it Penn State? Are they playing? They're playing. Okay, it, what, no, it was Ohio State. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was Ohio State. I, f- I fell for this before. You know, um, I thought that they actually had a chance. Obviously, um, to his little brother playing. Um, and I, know, I know that pisses him off because that's what everybody thinks him of as him. It's just to his little brother. Um, he has. I mean, yeah, because him... you look at his name and try fucking saying it. <laughs> right. Um, so. Uh, they have a chance. I fell for it before. I'm not going to fall for it again. I'm taking Penn State. Yeah, I'm going Penn State too, but also mainly just because ever since Mar- Maryland started out 5-0, and and then ever since they played Ohio State and lost, they just have not looked like the same team. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm going Penn State. Um, Next game, we got Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Little in-state rivalry. I'm curious what you're going to say for this because I know you got something to say, but I'll make my pick really quick. I think that I'm picking Oklahoma, um, and I think they're, they're just going to be pissed off that they pretty much lost their playoff spot. But at the same time, it could be the re- absolute reverse. They could just be like, I'm so done with this season because we're not going to make the playoffs, which they still have a chance to, obviously, but um, their chances dwindled a lot. Um, but I think Oklahoma is going to come out with fire and just be pissed off, and they're going to beat Oklahoma State yeah um so on Oklahoma State there is a young man on that team who is of the ripe age of 19 years old he is a sophomore whoa whoa. I do not like the way you just said that I love the way I just said that and he's a sophomore and he is the best running back in the nation by far. And his name is Ollie Gordon. And that man is so absurd and so insane. What he has done week after week is crazy. And this is for an Oklahoma State team that started off not great. And then, or well, they they started off, wait, who did they? Who are their losses to? Because I know they weren't. Yeah, they they started off not great. They started off one and two with losses to South Alabama and Iowa State, who are both. Wow, they lost who they, they are got murdered by South Alabama. Yeah, and then they found out that they had this young man Ollie Gordon on their team, and they said, "Oh shit, hey, just give him the ball the whole game," and it has worked. 
the whole this entirety of this season and um Oklahoma in their last game seemingly showed their flaws as far as the run defense goes and uh I just don't think you can do that against Ollie Gordon I think he's gonna take advantage of every single opportunity and chance you give him to break off a run and I honestly I'm taking Oklahoma State because I just I see Ollie Gordon just having a yet again another career day against a team that has shown lackluster rush defense, uh, especially in their most recent game. I mean, yeah, the the stars are aligning for Oklahoma and, State to win the and, game. and it's at Oklahoma State. So I yeah, I, 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 I think that crowd's gonna be rocking. That's what I'm saying. Like the stars are aligned for Oklahoma State to pull off this win. Um and I genuinely just I genuinely think it's gonna come down to what type of team do does does Oklahoma bring out? Do they bring out a team that is still playoff hopeful, and if not even playoff hopeful, um, Sugar Bowl maybe, or one of those those really high bowl games, or are they just playoff or bust? We lost the game. Well, it's a bust. Uh, I don't even care about the season. So I think that's what it's going to come down to. So, um, next game here. Uh, excuse me. We got Missouri at Georgia. No, I don't really care who wins this game, but I hope that Missouri wins it. But, again, another but, Georgia is going to win. I, I would love for Missouri to win it, but I think it's gonna, it's the same thing. Like, Kentucky thought that we had a chance against Georgia, and we were like, oh, Georgia's having a down year. They're not as good as they've been in the past years. They're still, mu- they're still leaps and bounds better than 99% of other teams. So I'm taking Georgia. Yeah, um, as good as Missouri has looked, I just don't see them walking into Athens and beating Georgia. So, especially since Georgia's looked like Georgia the past couple weeks. So, yeah, I'm I'm going. Georgia. And and on top of that, Missouri's defense is not good at either. Is not yeah. good. They've they've came up big at some points, um, but their Missouri's defense is terrible. Yeah. Um, California at Oregon. Um, if California, no, I'm not even, I'm not even going to say it. If, well, if California comes out with the same mentality as they did last week against USC, uh, it'll, it'll be close, but Oregon's much better than, than USC is. Um, and it's at Oregon. I see Oregon winning this pretty convincingly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Oregon. I just don't see that team. The same as you. I mean, you said it pretty good. Oregon's far and above better than USC, uh, as far as the defense goes. Um, but yeah, especially at Eugene. Uh, yeah, I'm going Oregon. Um, Kansas at Ohio State. Kansas. Uh, Kansas. Kansas. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm also going Kansas. Uh, Washington at USC. Because I didn't say anything about Kansas because this is the game I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about this because I don't know how much you have watched of, of Washington. And I know that I, and I even since the first podcast, I have been so high on Washington. And I continue to watch them. I know they are scraping some of these wins out of their ass. Stanford. Um, to be exact, they are, they they keep scraping by like they are they're due for a loss. But man, I keep watching Washington and something about them. I'm a fan of Washington. I like everything that their team is about. I, I love their, their 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 colors, their fan base, everything about Washington. I continuously I'm I'm becoming a, a big Washington fan over this season alone. Um. I hope they beat the absolute breaks off of USC, which is not going to be hard to do. And the only thing that's going to be hard to do is stopping Caleb Williams, but scoring is going to be easy. Yeah, yeah, I'm going Washington as well. Uh, I think I, I think Washington is slightly better overall as a team. Um, I still don't I don't think Washington's defense is really that good either, but it's nowhere near as bad as USC's. Um, and as long as Michael Penix can perform well, then, you know, and also, this could be a hell of a matchup for these two QBs to prove why they deserve to be the Heisman winner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Purdue at Michigan. 
Michigan, and it's just Purdue's no good. I mean, it's just making um, Brom look so much. Coach Brom looks so much better now that he left Purdue, and he kind of honestly built Purdue into a, a really solid team. A real like year in and year out, always putting out a good team. And then one year that he loses or leaves, I mean, uh, I mean, Purdue can't buy a win right now, and they're playing a cheating, scandalous school in Michigan. It's it's, it's going to be Michigan all day. Yeah, uh, I mean it, it's it's Michigan. It is what it is. Um, that's that's all I have to say. Michigan, uh, LSU at Alabama. Um, I am I'm I'm taking Alabama again. Another game I would love to see LSU win just for the sake of just shaking up the SEC because I just I just find it so much fun. Um, but I mean we like obviously Alabama loses that one game to. Texas and similar to Kentucky basketball as soon as they lose a game the the seasons of failure and stuff like that dude Alabama it's it's still Alabama they're still really good they are they're so good still um and even me and you we talked about that Alabama is not that good and we we had so many questions about them but they're 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 putting it every week they continue to put it together piece by piece um Alabama wins this game. Yeah, I'm I'm going Alabama as well, but I I do want to say I really love Jaden Daniels, uh, LSU's QB. He's he's so good. He's really fucking good. Um, I just don't think the team around him, um, and also, uh, <laughs> shocking, uh, that defense is not good. So I mean, I I think Alabama is just gonna take advantage of that defense. Um, even if LSU's offense can keep up with Alabama, I think their defense is going to lose them that game. Agreed. Um, Oregon State at Colorado. Here is another one of my upsets. I am picking Colorado here. And you might be thinking, what the heck, why? And I, again, very, very similar to the Oklahoma State game. I just feel like the stars are aligning for Colorado to win this game. At Colorado, obviously. But Oregon State, aren't they coming off a loss, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. They are coming off a loss. Colorado, I feel like, now their defense is still terrible. But their offense is still putting up numbers. And they are never out of a ball game, Especially in the Pac-12. Being in the Pac-12. You, you, they're never out of a ball game. So, I mean... I just I, I see that I see another uh, upset win for Colorado. Deion Sanders is going to be all over ESPN again, um, and they're going to the, Colorado might beat Oregon State and jump into the top twenty-five just because of the glazing. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Oregon State. Uh, because Colorado's defense isn't good, and even if that offense can keep up with the score. Uh, I don't think there's going to be really many possessions where Oregon State stalls out, unfortunately. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Oregon State in a, pro- I mean, in a probably high-scoring affair if I had to say yeah, something. because even Oregon State has shown at times that their defense is no good. Yeah, no, they, they, no. They, they, like, unless you're Oregon, no defense in the Pac-12 is really worth mentioning. Which is a crazy. Like, obviously, yeah. you have one or two teams, but the entire Pac-12. Yeah. Um, or were you done with uh, Oregon State, Colorado? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Uh, last one, UCLA at Arizona. And I, th- I, I have a feeling I'm gonna let you pick first on this this last one, but I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have similar thought processes on this one. Okay. Um, I've doubted them two weeks in a row. And it has not worked out for me. I'm going Arizona, especially at home and how good they've looked. I have a feeling the Arizona fan base is going to be really into that team right now. And I have a feeling that that home crowd might might surprise UCLA a little bit. Um, but also, Arizona's been playing out of their minds recently. So, uh, And I, I think they know that if they win this game, they'd probably crack the top 25. So this is a super important game for them. So I'm taking Arizona. I mean, yeah, you hit it. You pretty much hit it right on the nail, exactly what I was going to say. The other thing that I do is UCLA, they beat Washington State, who 
has proven to be such a disappointment this year. And then, other than that, what have they proven? You know, like they yeah. they beat Washington State and they they jump into the top twenty five and they they continue to climb the top twenty five, even after a loss to to Oregon State. So I mean, I don't I just haven't seen too much from UCLA besides that one win against Washington State, which every week that goes by seem that that loss is or that win is keeps getting diminished more and more. Right. So I mean, Arizona, I, I'm taking Arizona as well. All right. Well. This was a long podcast today, Parker. This was a yeah, long, but this, this, was, this was a good one. We, we had some it was. we had some good topics here. Yeah, yeah, and uh, hopefully you guys agreed. Um, that's gonna do it from us here at the Take His Whistle Podcast. I've been Josh. That has been Parker, and uh, we appreciate you guys for listening as always. And uh, Parker, um, <laughs> do you have anything to say? Man, man, my Miami Heat are one and four on the young NBA season. I don't know what the answer is with them. So uh, with that being said, I do not have anything to say. All right. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.